In this lecture, we are going to learn about process scheduling. So what is process scheduling? We learned that in computer, there is, let's say there is one CPU. So CPU is the central processing unit, which executes all the information, okay, all the instructions. So CPU is the workhorse that executes all your instructions. Now, if you have one CPU, then also you know that your computer can do multitasking. It can do multi-programming. Lot of applications can run parallelly. You can listen to music. You can work on your C++ code. And you can, in fact, do web browsing also all at the same time. So how it happens? That happens because lot of processes are running on your computer. Now the thing is, those run so fast they are sharing the CPU so that you don't in fact know that okay only one CPU is running all these programs. But the thing is, if there is a CPU, there is one person, okay? So there is one person, he is very fast and he can do multiple tasks parallelly, okay? Parallelly, but the reality is he is doing it so fast that work one, okay, so work one, he would so let's say all of them have 10 units of work. So work one, work two, work three and work four. So what he does, he shares the time slot among them and two units he performs for work one, then two units for work two then two un let's say two units for work three then for work four and he runs like this okay so a kind of time division multiplexing so basically he needs to schedule himself which task to be performed first for how much time and so on so this is known as process scheduling and here what happens maximize uh, aim is to maximize cpu okay maximize the performance of the cpu quickly switches process based on time sharing and it basically decides which process should be given the cpu next for execution so now job scheduling we have a lot of queues okay so queue basically when you are scheduling so you have let's say work one work two work three so whichever work is in the front of the queue then you basically take that out process it okay and then you take the next one okay so this is the basic idea and here the thing is that let's say i'm processing the cpu it takes out w3 let's say it required 10 seconds but the cpu can give only let's say four seconds at a time to any one task so it will process w3 and out of the 10 seconds that are required it will give four seconds to it and 40 percent of the work is done then this task had a or basically the process has a process control block block which has all the information about this process so here he will update that okay out of the 100 lines of code i have executed till line number 40 okay and then what are the calculations he has till now all those things will be stored in the memory then he will take out w3 w2 basically and so on so we have different types of queues the job queue so job queue is but uh, set of all the processes in the system okay whatever uh, processes are there ready queue is the set of processes that are now in the main memory or the ram and which needs to be run and they are waiting to be executed device queues these are the set of processes that are waiting for some input output so when you are executing some code let's say you say print f print f so here what will happen you will be printing something out and that printf for that you need the monitor as the output device so the cpu now that process will need the input output device and hence that process will go into the device queue 
so these are the so many things that are happening so let's go to the next slide so now if i ask you that how will you represent it in a data structure so we will need the process i have to identify how will i know which process i am scheduling what i'm processing so you need an id identifier for that that is known as process identifier you will see it in linux in your windows so each process has a process identifier that is unique then you will have the state is the process ready is it in the input output waiting for input output and so on then you have the time slice okay so scheduling scheduling information then you have the parents if it is a child process then which process forked it out and which are the input output devices that this process is working on these are the some of the things that you need to know about a process okay so now let's try to see so we will see here the representation of a process scheduling so this is interesting so there is a ready queue okay so we have a ready queue so here this is the all the processes that are in the memory which are waiting to be executed so whichever process are there they want to be executed and the cpu will be executing so let's say process p1 p2 p3 p4 and p5 are there in the queue this is the front this is rear so now p5 will be the first one to go to the cpu for execution when the process is executing so process executes some code so if that piece of code let's say it requires to ask for some user input okay so user input then what will happen it will this process now after coming to that line and executing it so it requires user input and hence it goes to input output request and it goes into the input output queue so my process 5 will execute till that part of where it required an input from the user then input output request is there so it will go into input output queue so p5 will let's say come here and let's say p6 and p7 were already there in the queue so they are now in the input output queue so p6 will be executed p7 is executed then p5 will get the chance and after p5 gets the user input he will now not he has basically left the cpu so he cpu is not there with him again he has to go into the ready queue he will be in the queue then again his number will come and he will have the cpu now and all the other instructions will be executed next thing that can happen there was nothing much let's say so he executed all lines of code but his time slice has expired so it has ended so his time unit whatever the cpu had decided to give to it it has ended so now again he will go into the ready queue please be in the line so that i can process other processes basically execute other processes and i cannot give all the time in my life to this particular process so cpu is very fair okay he is very fair and he doesn't allow one of the processes to only run and others to keep on waiting so it's good so now the next thing that can happen is the process forks another process a child process it means i have started another program so that process executes okay i'm forking a child that child executes and then again the parent process goes into the ready queue the next thing that might happen is i am waiting for some interrupt okay so i slept so let's say sleep was called sleep for 1000 milliseconds so then what happens you are now sleeping it means when you are sleeping so cpu there is no execution of code cpu is again relinquished and you are now waiting for interrupt to occur when the interrupt occurs again the task is ready to be executed it goes into the ready queue so these are the things that can happen to the process which is executing it might need input output so it relinquishes cpu its time slice is has ended so it relinquishes cpu it forks a child or it 
let's say it sleeps and it is waiting for some interrupt so when interrupt will come then it will become ready so this is how process scheduling happens and the schedulers are long term scheduler so there are two kinds of schedulers so long term schedulers so this basically selects which process should be brought into the main memory so there are processes running it decides which process should come in the main memory which are ready going to be executed short term scheduler this basically decides which process will get the cpu for execution so now the thing is what is happening with these two so first thing is short term scheduler is invoked very frequently in milliseconds they are fast long term scheduler are very infrequent so maybe slow so what happens is the long term scheduler basically decides how many processes are in your ready queue okay so it decides what is your level or degree of multi programming because in the ready queue as many programs that are there so that is the level of your multi programming because let's say i'm running vi editor i'm running word okay i'm running some song media player and then let's say some usb device pen drive okay so these are the tasks that are running and your multi programming decides that okay how many tasks should be there in your ram but then when all these tasks are there in your queue then it is your scheduler short term scheduler which decides how much time should be given for vi editor for word and so on it should use them another thing processes can be described as input output bound processes so they spend most of their times in input output rather than computation so they are waiting for input output that some like printers some process that is printing something so they are very short cpu burst it only gives them that okay which printer are you using where to go then it is all input output based cpu bound processes lot of computations they are doing so they have very long cpu bursts so i hope so this is the thing about scheduler of processes i hope you understand them thanks a lot